So I know a lot of my viewers have brought this up. I don't know if you're aware of it. And if you live in the United States, it's probably something you should be aware of. The RHDV2 virus has been found in the United States. What does this mean for your rabbits? What do you have to worry about? That's what we're gonna talk about in today's episode. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris, and if you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. Today I want to talk about the RHDV2. I always have to think about it when I say that acronym. It's Rabbit, Hemor Rabbit, <laughs> Rabbit Hemorrhagic Disease. Um, this is a version 2. This is a little different than the previous version of this disease. Now the previous version, the RHDV1, has been around for a very long time. It's, I think it was first discovered in like the early 1980s. I know that it's, if you you're in Australia, you're probably incredibly familiar with this disease because it's been in Australia for a very long time. Now, it, this is an incredibly contagious disease. It passes very easily from one rabbit to another, and it's incredibly deadly. It can do devastating results on a rabbit population. Now, the difference between that and the RHDV2 version of the disease is the RHDV2 version has been found in wild rabbit populations, whereas the RHDV1 was really specific to domestic rabbit populations. So this is a big concern because this means that now you have to worry about wild rabbits if you live in a part of the world where there are wild rabbits, like the United States, for example. Um, we have to worry about wild rabbit populations carrying that disease, and they can pass it on to your domesticated rabbits. And again, it's incredibly deadly, um, incredibly contagious, um, and very, very, um, <laughs> very devastating to rabbits in general. Uh, so there are a few things about this RHDV2 version of the virus that make me want to talk about it. First of all, it's been found in the United States in wild rabbits rabbit populations in Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and I think recently in California in a jackrabbit. It hasn't been widespread yet, but this disease has hit other parts of the world and has spread incredibly fast. So uh, like Iberian Peninsula, for example, when, the, uh, when this disease hit there, it went through that population incredibly quickly, like 18 months, I want to say, and it killed like 65% of the wild rabbit population out there, which means it affected other animals too. Um, the, the eagles there that uh, relied on rabbits as part of their main food supply, uh, the ibex there, the, there was a couple other animals that were really, their populations were really devastated stated too because they rely on wild rabbits as part of their main food source. So what do we have to worry about with this disease? How big of a threat is it? Right now, honestly, it's not a big threat, especially if you keep your rabbits up off the ground, in cages off the ground, even if it's in your area, the, the chances of it actually getting to your rabbits are probably pretty slim unless you're bringing you know, uh, forage in from the woods where there are rabbits that have this disease they've been foraging. It gets passed through bodily secretions, through contact with other animals. It can live in the wild for up to three months, like outside of a host, in ideal conditions. Um, you know, chances of it staying alive that long are probably pretty slim, honestly, but it's possible. So if you are bringing in forage from other areas, um, like if you're foraging from the woods and you've got wild rabbit populations there and that wild rabbit population has that disease passing around through it, it's possible that you could bring that in and introduce it to your rabbitry. But the chances of that happening are probably pretty slim because right now that disease has been kind of isolated in just a couple of different areas of the country. That doesn't mean it's going to stay that way, though. It could very easily spread throughout the rest of the populations through the entire country and through the entire continent. It's been discovered in Canada as well. Um, I think that was the RHDV1 virus, actually. Maybe it was two. I can't remember. You'll have to look it up and see. But um, So, you know, as far as the threats to your, your actual domesticated rabbits, it's probably pretty slim. Use general hygiene. Um, you know, isolate your rabbits from the wild population so they can't be in contact with them. When you bring new rabbits into your rabbitry, make sure you isolate them from the rest of your rabbitry for a period of time. Wash your hands real good after handling one of them before going on to your other rabbits. Those are all just things you probably should do on a normal basis anyway. Um, so if you're doing those things already, you're probably already protecting your rabbits. Now where I would be mostly concerned is if the uh, virus has been detected in your area in wild rabbit populations and you keep your rabbits in like a colony setting where they have access to the ground and it's fairly open, um, 
other animals can, can get into that, whether that be birds or mice or any of those kinds of things, they can carry that disease in uh, from you know, the wild population of rabbits in the area. Predators can carry that around and, and spread it through like their droppings or, or a number of different ways that it could be spread. Those were the areas where I'd be most concerned. But otherwise, at this point, it's probably not a huge concern for our domestic rabbit population. There isn't currently a, um, a vaccine available for this disease in the United States. There's one that's been used in Europe for a while but it's not approved for import into the United States yet. That may be coming and that may be something that we can get at, at some point in time. But again, right now, it's not a huge concern with domesticated rabbits. If you keep them in cage systems, or even honestly, if you're keeping them in a colony setting, the disease just hasn't spread that far yet. But that could change very, very quickly. So it's something to monitor. It's something to keep an eye on just to know if it's in your area or not. Here are the big concerns about this disease. Because it affects wild populations of rabbits, that means it can spread through, like I said, the entire country. Now, chances of it completely wiping out the, the wild rabbit population are probably pretty slim, but there are some areas of the country where we have very isolated, you know, um, endangered uh, species of rabbits, and it could, it could affect those, and it could make them go extinct. They could kill off entire populations in those small, um, isolated uh, areas where there are, you know, like I said, smaller populations of specific species of rabbits. Um, there's a, I can't remember the names of them, but there's a couple in particular that are in like New Mexico area and those kinds of things that are, they're endangered rabbits and they're a specific population that, that just live in this one area. Those rabbits are probably most at risk. I am concerned about what it's going to do to our wild rabbit population. It's kind of like chronic wasting disease in deer. It's something to monitor. It's something to keep an eye on. Unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do about it, but watch and see what happens. Um, I know that there are a lot of experts keeping a really close eye on this, so hopefully there is some kind of solution that's found, some kind of vaccine that can be you know, put in the uh, water supply. Here, here's the problem with the vaccine, too, is that most of the time vaccines have to be injected. You can't just catch wild rabbits and inject them with a vaccine and then let them go. They're incredibly... Um, the, 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 Point at catching a rabbit, a wild rabbit, is a big stress factor on them. They're very delicate. They don't really do very well with those kinds of uh, things. So that's not really an option. In order to administer a vaccine, it would have to be something that would be like in a food or, or bait, you know, type situation where you're baiting, and that's just a huge undertaking. I don't know if that's a possibility or not. I think we're going to be kind of stuck, like I said, with just watching it and seeing what happens. Unfortunately, right now it does seem to be kind of isolated. It's only in a couple of areas. But that could change, so it's something to keep an eye on. Not a big concern for our domesticated rabbits right now. I don't see that changing anytime soon. Um, I don't think it's going to move through domesticated. I mean, it's not an airborne virus in that sense, so it's probably not anything that we need to really, really worry about with domestic rabbits. Um, just again, practice the the you know safe handling, especially if it's been discovered in your area. Be careful where you get your hay from. Make sure you know where that's coming from. Um, if it's coming, you know, if you've got um, RHDV2 in your area, or if it makes a bigger impact, if it starts really spreading through the country and makes bigger news, you'll know about it. At that point, be careful where you're getting your hay and your pellets and those kinds of things from. Chances of those being infected with it are pretty slim, but it still would be something to kind of keep an eye on. So again, I'm not terribly worried about it right now. Um, it is something to monitor. Unfortunately, that's about all we can do with it. So. I'm not a biologist. I'm not an expert on this. I'm just going with what the experts have said. So, you know, do some research on your own. See what else you can find out about it. Um, me personally, I'm not going to worry about it too much. This was just a question that came up a couple of times from viewers, especially in my live broadcasts. And uh, I thought, well, I'll look into that a little bit more, shoot a video, and give you guys my thoughts on what I uh, researched on it. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless.